What's up, y'all? My name is Ian Edwards, and welcome to the Soccer Comic Rant. So the topics we're going to cover today is Mason Greenwood is finally leaving Manchester United. We will discuss Richard Arnold's letter, his open letter, and, you know, what the fans think about it, maybe what we think about it. Uh, Liverpool's midfield, how it did the week before in comparison to this week. And are they finally getting it together as a team? Uh, Chelsea's two $100 million or 100 million, I don't know, pound, euros, dollar, <laughs> CDM, and how it not only cost Chelsea a lot of money for them, but it also cost them Chelsea the game this weekend. Uh, we're going to talk about United failure at Spurs. And we're going to get updates on Southampton and the championship, just period, you know what I mean? And we're going to talk some fantasy league. And, uh, you know, we'll remember some other things. And just like we're going to talk about the history of like 100 mil players in football and how they've done overall and what we think about them. Do big transfers really work? And uh, we got Lee Hudson, stand a comic from England. Southampton player. He's not wearing the colors today, but he should. They won. You won this weekend, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah so you got, you got, we got one winner on the podcast this weekend, <laughs> and it's in the championship. Good for you. Congrats. I wonder how that feels. And then we got Neil Chakrabarty, stand up comic. Hey. Chelsea fan, nowhere close. There's not even blue in the room in the background. He's not, he's not <laughs> having it. The only thing you have in common. With a Chelsea jersey, is that you don't have any sponsor on that shirt that yep, you got absolutely, on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's the that's the closest time you got to it's Chelsea, right? Clean now. and dry, feeling? just like our performance. <laughs> I, I don't think your performance was that bad. If that's where you want to start, I don't I mean, think it was. It, it was not bad, but it was also irrelevant. Like we've been having the same game over and over and over again. I think, mm-hmm. of course, like. Second half was much worse than the first half. First half, I, I think we were fine. Like we were creating chances, got that one goal, got that penalty, which, you know, I don't know why the footballing gods have to conspire to make me miss William, but they have. And and Jorginho. <laughs> and Jorginho, and two, two and, players you hate. Like you see, Jorginho is like, you see, Neil, penalties <laughs> aren't that easy. Or Enzo, who cost you all that money, would have just put it away. Yeah, if I, you know, just going through the squad, I feel like we might have missed a trick there because actually there are no specialist uh, penalty, penalty takers in the squad. Uh, like Enzo, I think he used to take when he was back in Argentina, but he hasn't taken a penalty in over a year. I think he took one at the World Cup. Uh, I mean, club football, he hasn't. But he took one at the World Cup. I think he missed it. And then Nicholas Jackson, I don't think he's ever taken penalties. The only person who's got a peg of taking penalties is Raheem Sterling. And even with him, it's like, a, you know, he misses uh, he misses one and two. So, uh, but yeah, I still feel he should have taken it. At least the senior guy, you know, who, and he's having a great game. Uh, you know, I've been very critical yeah. of Sterling in the pre- yeah. preseason. But yeah, I know he was, he was on fire. And... Uh, I actually feel the problem that happened in the second half was just at the end of the first half. So Chukwameka who was playing number 10. He mm-hmm. got off injured, right? And then we got Mudrik in. And suddenly we were not, I think that number 10 spot being vacant meant Sterling and Gallagher, they were like kind of taking turns there. Sterling was playing a lot there, which was a problem because he was having so much joy on that right-hand side, being isolated against um against a fullback that I actually felt we compo- we we created two problems to solve one. And um it might continue to happen because you know we know Pochettino, he loves his number 10. So like almost all the time that he plays, he uses a prominent number 10. And then Unkuku was supposed to be that guy. He was having a good preseason and then he gets injured. And the backup, Chukwemeka, who is the other guy who can play number 10, has now gotten injured. I think they've both got uh, the, the meniscus tear, the MCL. So 
they both fall like out for like seven or eight months. And so I don't know who's going to play there right now unless we buy somebody. So I buy somebody. You have you have a player named Lukaku who's won a Serie A title. Yeah, I yeah, I think he's tried really hard to take himself off the list. So we got to respect his work ethic. <laughs> Doing that, <laughs> like, let's not let's not have him involved. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Lee, what do you think about a team? I mean, you, you you know, there's so many things. There's a lot of teams you can laugh at in football. United is one of them. And I was drawing that attention to you guys towards the end of the season. Like, we're up for sale. And <laughs> now it, it even got worse. We're up for sale. We got two bidders. We didn't choose between the bidders. We might lose them. Then how was that going to affect the transfer window to go to a transfer window while your inner shop window is bananas and you have a new coach and you don't want to lose him and you want to keep developing teams. So we're in that situation. And how much money do you have to spend when you don't know who's the owner, who's okay in these sales? And then, you know, and, and then our performance at Spurs or even the win against Wolves. Like there's some... And we have Mount, so there's some laughing. There's there's reasons to laugh at United, but and but the the, the top comedic team right now is probably mm-hmm. Chelsea. You know, like you definitely outdone us just based on how much you spent, how you lost your previous owner, your new owner, the, the, how much you spent more than a small country to like just get five people or just a few players. And then last week, you pulled off. Liverpool looked stupid because they lost the bid for two players that you guys wanted, and those players went to you. But then you played one of those players, and he was he was responsible for the loss. And one of the players you got last year, Enzo, he was another player responsible for the loss. So I just, I just want to – and I'm sure, listen, they're young. Enzo's young, and he's actually been playing good. And Saicedo's young. And he'll probably has a bright future at Chelsea, but I got. What do you think about or both of you about like hundred mil transfers? Like, does the money put pressure on the players to do more to prove that they worth hundred mil? Meanwhile, what they were doing, which was normal to become worth a hundred mil, was what the reason why people get got them. So do players feel like I need to do something extra to validate this price tag? Meanwhile, they should just be like, just play how you play. How you play was worth 100 mil, not after you got bought for 100 mil. It's, it's kind of a weird one, isn't it? Like, uh, it's, I, I'm pretty sure players do feel it because they know the numbers. And there's, I think there's pressure, though, if you're a player that goes to a big club from a sort of mid-level club, the pressure's there anyway, though, because like if you go from a Brighton to a Chelsea, um, the expectation levels are different, um, and yeah, it is what it is. I, 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 you know, I thought it was funny that you know Chelsea had these two hundred mil centre midfielders, whereas West Ham signed the best set piece taker in Europe for thirty mil, who was playing in their midfield, and he, well, without him, I'm not sure if West Ham would have won that game. Um, two assists, no question. Um, Causing havoc with those uh, those corners as well, um, you know. I mean, I mean, fair play to West Ham. They upgraded on right and they got a discount. Uh, they saved some money as well. So, um, you know, they got they got a rice who can take set pieces um, <laughs> um, bargain. You know, and, and they made seventy million profit in the process. So, um, no, I mean, I, I love Warprouse. It was good to see him have a good game. Sorry, Neil. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I still love him and it was good to see him um, sort of validate his worth as a Premier League player um, by coming in and, and, and doing it straight away. So I was pleased with that. But yeah, 100 mil is, it's it's hard to sort of, because like there was players that cost that sort of money like a few years ago and that was insane. Like when Pogba, um, and it's like, like with inflation, I don't even know what a hundred mil now would have been hmm. um, three years ago. Or yeah, it's 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 pretty wild. Um, 
like I say, all, I, mean, I think we've mentioned it before, but all of this is making Bellingham look like a steal for Real Madrid, though, with so far, 80 yeah. million or 85 million, what they paid for him. Um, he had another great it game. Was, it, the was, weekend. it was 100 mil. Uh, he's on this list. Let me see. I got to find him on this list. He's actually, you know, you say 100 mil, you think the list is going to be short, but oh, he, he's 13th. <laughs> he's 13th. So is it euro? Is it in euros? Yeah, it's one hundred and three euros. Euros, yeah, yeah. plus yeah, because it yeah. thirty one million euros in add-ons, and I think after this weekend, yeah. he already got fifteen of the million euros <laughs> in add-ons because he scored. I think he scored twice. This yeah, weekend. against uh, uh, Al Maria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They went one 0 down in that game, and then he got them back into it. Um, yeah, so it's there's a lot of players. I mean. It's. It depends where you buy them as well. Like it's. I think it's slightly harder for. Um, if you sign a CDM for a hundred mil, it's harder for them to be deemed a success or a failure because of the metrics involved. Whereas, like, if you sign a striker for a hundred mil, it's like, well, did they hit twenty goals? <laughs> yes or no. You can kind of dictate whether that player has been a failure. If it's a winger, you can look at goals and assists, kind of thing. Um, Whereas, yeah, CDM, it's a harder one to quantify. And also, like, I mean, people are having these discussions now after, you know, one game for Casado. Um, and but that's when it's fun. Part... <laughs> yeah, this is true. If, if, he, um, if he validates 100 mil, then we just have this straight discussion about how <laughs> he validated 100 mil, and that's kind of boring. So, like, that, that yeah, one then day... it's like he should. Like, he's, he's yeah. just doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah, there's no fun then, in that conversation. We're not even, and we're really good. We're not even waiting one game. I think it was thirty minutes like, <laughs> yeah, to no. judge him immediately. Like this is <laughs> this is this is perfect. <laughs> let me let me let me run some players through. Yeah, yeah, let's have a look at this list. So 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 Neymar, he was two hundred and twenty-two million euros. What do you guys think? So so let's just. Let's just mark whether each of them has been a failure or a flop or, you know, TBD. Okay, all right. So can you mark that for me? So, I'll, I'll okay, yeah, names. I'll do that. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I, Neymar. I mean, he was sort of signed to bring the Champions League, wasn't he? But he still won championships there and he still scored a high amount of goals for them. Yeah. I mean, and the Champions League is always such a hard thing to say like, yes, if we win, it's a success. If we don't, it's a failure because it's only one team can win it and there's a whole bunch of good teams every year vying for it. I, I would lean more to the... I wouldn't say he's been like a roaring success there, but I would say success. I agree. I, I'd say success too. Also, because, you know, he was truly the first... I mean, I know Zlatan and uh, uh, Beckham were at uh, PSG, but Neymar, when the, the time that transfer happened was kind of the first real Galactico in his prime going to PSG. And I think commercially, at least, he's put PSG on the map. And it was that team, like uh, Neymar and Mbappe coming in together, that pretty much made PSG a, a really big name. Yeah, PSG was like the first Saudi league. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but so, Neymar was saying a hit. Me, for Neymar, so I say a hit. Like, I, I feel like he gets a lot of criticism and people forget. They, people remember more what he hasn't achieved, mm. like the pundits, as opposed to what he has achieved. They just blow off the, the, the league titles at, in France like it ain't nothing. But you, you don't win it every year. You know, despite PSG's success, they don't win it every year. So I say yes, but the only thing I would say and add as a negative to my yes is that you don't spend 22, 222 million euros on a player not to win the Champions League. <laughs> so, so that's the only thing where I would yeah. say, yeah, yeah. Is it like that amount means we, we're spending this to specifically attain this goal and did he attain it no he did go to a final and people forget that and they blow off going to a final like spurs rides out going to a final for like the next hundred years 
in for the next hundred years. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, I, I was like, everybody remember the time Spurs went, and it's like, but they look at like PSG yeah. going as if they're not even going. So uh, yeah, it was uh, a very close it, final. It wasn't, uh, you know, it was a one nil final. Yeah. They could have won. Yeah, they could have won, and 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 they played a Bayern team that destroyed everybody else. Yeah, at Barcelona with Messi. You know, the group, yeah. greatest player in all here. Uh, Kylian Mbappe, Monaco to PSG, uh, 145 million euros plus 35 million in add ons. So, one thing I'll say on Mbappe is that, again, similar to this, I think we, we kind of have to have the same discussion as Neymar, right? They, they, they came in at the same time, they did pretty much the same thing, and then they're leaving this club at pretty much the same state, right? But Mbappe, PSG is still getting almost $100 million on the Neymar sale, so they still recoup some of that money. With Mbappe, it kind of looks like uh, PSG is going to be left with nothing. And and I don't know if you want to factor that in to quantify whether, you know, how well did that transfer go? Because on the sporting page, again, brought a lot of commercial value. But PSU were winning league once even before uh, even before these guys came in. They did get to the Champions League final. But if you have to pinpoint the Champions League final on, on one person, Mbappe missed a tap in. <laughs> Not Neymar. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm just saying, and he might actually leave the club uh, getting them a zero uh, transfer fee, whereas Neymar got them almost $100 million. So I think it depends whether you're looking at like success from the club's point of view or success from a personal mm. point of view as well, because the thing with like Neymar, Neymar arrived as a winner from Barcelona, um, whereas like Mbappe, he'd, he'd had some success with Monaco, but mm. he was still a young player with potential, whereas during his time at PSG, he's essentially developed into one of the best in the world, um, which, you know, in terms of performances, I would say is a success. Um, you know, he's won titles as well. He's become a key player for his national team in that time. Um, and I think just his status within the game now would dictate that he's not been a failure per se there. Um, you see some players who they'll go to a club and their status within the game will diminish or plateau, whereas I think his has only gone up. Um, mm. And, you know, PSG not making money on him or losing money on him, essentially. Um, if he goes for a free, that's that's on the club, not necessarily on... It's, like I say, it depends whether you're looking at it from a personal point of view or a club point of view. From a yeah, club think- point of view... Maybe I think not it's judging the, the transfer, biggest... right? Not the player. Yeah. So what? I think we're judging the transfer, not the player. Yeah. I, I, I mean, would, I'd would say he's in, helped. Would, I think we're judging the, the money that they spent for the time yeah. that they were there. Yeah. But uh, did the club get what they wanted for that value, for that money? But they did get, yeah, like in both these cases, they did get some value. But maybe not the ultimate. They get 100 value. million yeah. worth of value. 150, 80 million. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I think I think it's harder when you're if you're a club like PSG where winning the league is just an expectation. Yeah. And then the Champions League is such a hard thing to pin your success failure um, sort of marker on when only, like I say, only one team can win it, and there's always good teams, and it's always. Um, a hard trophy to win there's a lot of luck involved as well in terms of who you get to play and over two legs you know just what happens and um, yeah the fact that they got to the final was pretty big but yeah you can't uh, pin everything on that I think it's a bit different in in leagues where there's potentially different winners um, because then it's like you know winning the league is is more of an achievement Um, whereas yeah for PSG it's now yeah it's now just an expectation uh, my take on Mbappe is that it's the same take as as uh, Neymar, but because they both played in the same final that Neymar went to with PSG, but also my memory of Mbappe is 
Monaco won the league the year before he went mm-hmm. to PSG. And it was because of his performances on that Monaco team that won the league that PSG was like, hey, we need to buy this guy. So then he goes to PSG and then PSG wins the league. So he actually like went there to not just help them win Champions League, but to stop Monaco from beating them in the league and for them to win the league. So he definitely won him some leagues. Like it, it would have been easy if he went somewhere else, <clears throat> you know, for PSG to like find a guy that could consistently make everybody suggest that they should win <clears throat> the the league one titles every year so easily. So I'll give him that. Plus, uh, I like what Lee said about like how his value has grown with while he was at the club, whether it was for his, with his national team or not. So it just and then what you said, Neil, about his commercial value means his commercial mm-hmm. value grew. And so he brought in so much money to the club compared yeah. to what they paid for him. So he didn't win a Champions League with his club, but he won the World Cup while he was there. He boosted the value and the profile of the club and also himself. So like in no other world would you say that a player like this or in any sport or field would you say a player like this wasn't a success because his value is still up whether he's leaving the club or he stays his value is up so it couldn't have been a failure it's not like Harry Maguire his value is down you know what I mean like it's it's clearly down like it didn't grow while he was at uh, United so I'd say I'd say yes but with that even with less of a hint of that no and then mm-hmm. I think there's one thing else I wanted to say about Mbappe. I can't remember, so I'll just leave it. I mean, and this this one should be easy. This is the third one. Jao Felix, 126 million euros. We shouldn't even. This shouldn't even flop. take long for anybody. Yeah, flop. So what? Flop. flop. <laughs> what yeah. you got? What you got? Yeah, Maybe? I think. I think. Like Simeone had, had developed Aleti into a, I mean, he'd won a title by the time Felix had came, um, mm-hmm. and he didn't really elevate them to a level they weren't already at. Um, I mean, he he probably just from memory, like he he'd done some okay numbers there in terms of goals and assists and stuff, but nothing like outrageous. Um, yeah. So I'd say for for the for the level of money they've invested into him and what he's returned and also again bringing into the, the future transfer thing yeah I think way off right and then yeah. I won't even say it's a flop I'll say he has not given them what they paid for him and uh, you know so I'm not arguing with either of you it's just like Maybe in the future he can. When he did play for Chelsea, it's the most I saw on that loan of him play. So he does have some skill. But even at that level of skill at Chelsea, it was not 126 million euros worth of skill. You know, so I, and and so here's the thing in common with all the three we mentioned so far. Like even with the positive ones, the first two, there's a yes with a hint of no. And those are the good ones. One of those want to work yeah, up. Yeah. You know, so 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 this is where this hundred million euros, pounds, dollar thing is the, that's the, the hint of where it's going so far. Enzo Fernandez, Benfica to Chelsea, 2023, 121 million euros. That's your boy, Neil. What's up? And he just missed oh, the man. penalty this weekend. Against West Ham. I mean, so far, it's, I, I feel it's a little too early to tell. And that that's kind of what I feel about all these transfers generally, that a lot of it has to do with what the club can help you, like what plans the club has for you, like how, you know, what where you fit into the manager's uh, designs and the, uh, uh, is there a system around you that really helps you to become your best version, Right. And uh, I think that's really critical to see with Enzo and Casero. We, I know we'll talk about Casero, but both of these players, Chelsea right now is kind of in a place where, forget 
assessing individual transfers. There's no aspect of Chelsea where you can have, uh, you know, because there are no there are no parameters. Like it's just is so much in flux. So, yeah, I I put down as TBD. What you got, Liam, on uh, Enzo? I agree with Neil. Um, I mean, you've already seen an improvement in him from sort of last season where he was fairly anonymous um, to then sort of looking more of an influential player this year. So, um, yeah, it's got to be a TBD on that one um, just because of the time he's been at the club um, and his age and everything. And just the fact that, yeah, like Neil said, the club are in such a transitional state as well. Um, it's It's just... Crazy what's the, what's that. The, what's know. the CDM's job? Uh, it depends. You can different types of CDM. Some CDMs are playmakers. Some are destroyers. Um, some of them they they need them to do a bit of everything. Some are box to box. Um, but I mean, positional discipline, progressing the ball up the pitch, and breaking up play seem to be the um, the key ones. So stats wise, if you're looking at like you know, interceptions, ball recoveries, tackles those sort of things, and then progressive passes and things like that as an in-possession stat, um, ball retention. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, I will say, though, that already he has proved to be an upgrade on who he had before, like Jorginho, in the in those parameters, like going forward. I think he already has... He's already beating Jorginho in any, all of those, um, like progressive passes, chances created, assists. Mm. And I think defensively, he can get better. But then again, the bar was so low defensively with Jorginho that I, do you, even there, like, it's it's not a, uh, it's not that big a deal. Like, he, he's at least more athletic than Jorginho. So, um, yeah, I, whether we'll get, I think what we're trying, that's a different question, right? Like, did the club, Upgrade is a different question. Was was the from was the upgrade worth a hundred million dollars? Uh, so, yeah, for for the hundred million dollar question, a uh, hundred million pound question, I think it's a TBD. Yeah, it, it's it's TBD for me. Uh, you know, I, I I like what I saw even when Chelsea was in flux last season. I felt like there's something there, and he's playing decent in the worst time possible. So that means when they get better, like they will get better. It's, it's like, he's the type of guy you could build a team around. But when you have two guys, that does it work when you have to build a team around two similar guys that cost the same amount of money? Does that hurt or does that help? I, I think again, like if the roles are well-defined, and it's uh, you know the manager has a clear idea of what you're trying to do with these two players, then there then there are no conflicts, right? It's only when you try when you start, um, you know, fiddling with it and not you know sending out mixed messages, then the players themselves are confused, right? Like it should be logically that Casado is the one that sits back and and so uh, does more of the forward thinking work, both playing at a similar starting position, but they they have more to do with the ball. Uh, there are different things to do with the ball. Uh, Enzo, for example, like just two games into the season, he has 36 progressive passes. The next highest in the league is Estupinian on 21. So already you're seeing certain things where Enzo is putting his mark on the Chelsea team. How much did Estupinian cost? I would be surprised if it's more than a million, considering he's a Brighton player. <laughs> I well, I definitely know so, how much he's so, going to cost next so, summer. So he's so <laughs> he's doing million. million. <laughs> so, so Enzo is doing million dollar things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For a hundred and uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. You see, he, he's he's got a future. I was just going to say, like, if you say like a a, a CDM is supposed to stabilize a team, Chelsea is. Is in so much flux that this is definitely failing so far. But like I say, it's it's too it's way too early. So yeah, and I, I I I believe in it. I believe in Enzo, Philippe Coutinho, Liverpool to Barcelona, twenty eighteen, one hundred and twenty wow. mil plus forty mil in 
add on. I mean, if you get loaned to Villa um, before the end of your contract, then that was a flop. Um, no, no shade on Villa there. Um, but if you, you know, if you go to Barca for that much money and then you end up getting loaned to Villa, then you, something's gone wrong. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing but a flop. I mean, they, he, he was. He was in unreal form for Liverpool when when Barca paid that, but I think it was another case of Barca buying a player that. that I mean, we talked about manager having a plan for a player. I don't think Barca knew what they were going to do with him. Yeah. Sometimes Barca just like signing a player because that player is doing well somewhere else, but they don't know what they're going to do with them. Um, it was the same when Barca signed Raquel May back in the day. Is like they didn't know how to use him effectively. The same with Coutinho when they signed him. You know, they signed him at a time when they still had Messi, and it's like, well you're going to, at Liverpool, he was like the main man. It's like, no, you're going to have to try and fit around other people in this team. You're down the pecking order in terms of superstars. So um, I think it was, yeah, it was always going to be tough for him. I could see why he made the move because it's, you know, for especially for sort of South American players, you know, to go to Barca, you're treading the, the, the footsteps of Ronaldinho and Ronaldo and people like that. Um, I can understand it, but yeah, it was, I, I has to be done as a flop. I think there are two players on this list which we can you know skip all debate and attribute the same reasons: Hazard and Coutinho. <laughs> they're, they're no, both no, no, we're going to talk about Hazard. <laughs> we're going to talk about Hazard. Don't try to. Yeah, both are like you know the Premier League club scammed the Spanish club and got a whole <laughs> bunch of money. <laughs> yeah, well, at least Hazard was a mistake that someone else made that gave Chelsea money rather than. Yeah, the other way but, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Yeah, one of those. I mean, the thing I do want to ask, I guess, Neil, because... Because... And so... Who's doing this spending at Chelsea? Because when Potter was there, you might be like, maybe Potter is asking for these players. But he's gone. Hmm. And then now you have a new manager there and you're still buying so who's ordering these sales no matter who the manager is? Or is the manager a part like like what's I think there's there's multiple layers to it, right? So there's a part of the budget that's going for just players for the future. And you know, this whole nine hundred million, whatever number we come up with, there's a big chunk of it are players who will we've not never not even seen play for the Chelsea's uh, first team. So they're all earmarked for the future. And those signings are happening exclusively from the scouting and the director level, um, you know, those folks. Now, when it comes to players like Quesero, Enzo, and, uh, you know, Lavia, I think the, that's coming from inputs from the manager and the sporting directors. That's similar to a model which a lot of clubs have now, where manager comes out and says, hey, this is the kind of profile we need. And hey, this is the kind of profile um, the squad lacks right now. So go and get me a player that fits that. And then the sporting directors go to the, you know, using the help of the scouting, um, find that player. Um, So if you see Chelsea right now, we've gone in for a two-pronged approach, right? Where we are getting these $100 million uh, players, but we're also getting really cheap players who nobody has ever heard of. And uh, so obviously the trade-off is... Even, even when you scouting. get them, we don't hear of them because you spend so much money on the big players. Yeah, the dark that, is that all news yeah, smothers yeah, yeah. all the, the, yeah, the deals yeah. that you did get. Yeah, so uh, the, the tricky part right now is that we spent a whole lot of money in last summer and sacked Tuchel the day after the transfer window closed. And then we spent a lot of money in January and then sacked sack Potter soon after. And now mm-hmm. we spent a whole lot of money in this j- summer window. And of course, we are just here, right? We, it's soon too, too, soon, too soon to judge. So um, Only there's a method to, to the madness, <laughs> but the madness is so much that the method is... Is struggling for breath, actually. Why? Why is Bowley going to the transfer windows like a rapper at a strip club and just like <laughs> throwing money out? 
<laughs> this is this is Jay Z. He has Beyonce at home. <laughs> He's not valuing Lewis Hall. Like we have Lewis Hall. Like there's a lot of players from the academy who I feel like you know. I like Lewis Hall. You know, I and like we Lewis and Hall. he's we're selling it. Can you believe that to he's Newcastle, of all uh, teams, like the who is actually a rival right wow. now for a top four. So we're selling him for like I think twenty eight million pounds something like that. And, and he he played left back in that game against United, back. but he yeah, could also play midfield, and he yeah. also played for the for the England youth team that won the the, yeah. the under twenty one. Wow. Yeah. I would, I would, I would snatch him. I would swoop on that in a heartbeat. He's press resistant. Oh, yeah. oh, that would be a great backup for sure if he's injured, man. Oh, just. I mean, the, the Newcastle fullbacks are going to be Holland and Fermento. It's just, it just kills me. Yeah, I'm dying. I'm dying now too. <laughs> uh, I feel bad for Tino though because he's gone to Newcastle and he could have played left back as well. Um, yeah. But now he's literally just Trippier's understudy, and mm. I can't see him playing that many games. No, yeah. But I think they're going to play Champions League this time, right? And Tripp- Trippier is what he's what thirty. He's definitely above thirty, right? Yeah, so, I think he's like thirty-two. Yeah, so you know, I think if he does well, then that then that spot is theirs for the taking. Mm. Unless he gets injured, I think, I think Trippier is so important to them for set pieces as well. Yeah. I think unless Trippier gets injured, I can't see. In all competitions, leave Romento starting more than 10 games. Mm. That's yeah. good. He, he's there for the future, man. And, and, and Eddie Howe makes players better. So by the time mm-hmm. he's of age, like after Trippier retires and after like getting in here and there in games, uh, he's, he's going to be phenomenal. I think a year with uh, Russell Martin playing 46 games would have been better for him personally, but I'm biased. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you you just you just want the player to stay home. <laughs> uh, this is this is a weird one, and then maybe we'll do two more because they're two more because they're from the Premier League, and and they, but this one isn't. Uh, Atletico Madrid to Barcelona, twenty nineteen. Antoine Griezmann, one hundred and twenty mil euros. I think that's a flop, right? Like he yeah. cost them a whole bunch of money. And then they eventually had to pay him to leave or to go yeah. back to and he went, Atletico Madrid. Yeah, to go back. Yeah. And then they actually yeah. won when he went back or something like that. Uh, yeah, I think he won. I think he won one league there. Oh, okay. I no, think I don't he think he won at, all the wins. He win at uh, Barcelona. Nah, I think they lost there too. I think they won when he wasn't there. But yeah, we have to yeah, look yeah. it up. Yeah, I think so. Atletico I'm, won. Wow, I'm sure he won something. Barcelona. Yeah, he just won a Copa del Rey at Barcelona. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah, he, he missed. He leaves so that the other team can win the league. And oh, yeah, that happened he... both at Madrid and, and at Barcelona. At Madrid. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. 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 The only thing, he's got the World Cup and a World Cup final. And he's, he's rejuvenated <laughs> his career and changed his position. And maybe Barcelona should have used him that way, but they don't spend 120 mil on a player to play position that or the way that France uses him or the way that Atletico Madrid is there. But so it's a flop. Yeah. Uh Moises, Moises, Saicedo, Brighton to Chelsea, 117 million euros plus 17.5 million in add-ons. It's a flop, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so far, yes. <laughs> But, but let, let's 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 give the guy another yeah, yeah, yeah. forty-five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Let's see how he does next week in the first half, yeah. or whenever he comes on against Luton Town. Yeah, he can't do uh, it there. Then it's definitely a flop. Okay, I said I would say TBD, and then I guess the next guy is who is Rice, Declan Rice. Yeah, I think again, one hundred and seventeen right? mil. Yeah, well, I like how he looks so far. Yeah, he's TBD on the positive side. Yeah. Like, he looks good right now. Yeah. Undefeated. <laughs> yeah. And he's been in, and, and then he, he, you know, he might not get as much credit as he deserves today because Arsenal were a man down. So then he's a CDM on a team that's a man down and they held off all the tax from Crystal Palace at Crystal Palace. So you got to put that into some consideration. I feel like Arsenal has not added someone that can help them go forward, but can also help them defend. 
and which is key, like last season, towards the end when Salivo got injured, like also had some trouble in the back. But when you have Declan Rice there, it, it, it might help them in situations like that when they're using like a defender like Gabriel, who they don't rate 100% the way they rate, rate Saliba. Like he might cover for the mistakes that a Gabriel might make. So I, I, a TBD positive there. Yeah. And then Jack Grealish, Miller to Man City, 117, another 117 million euro dude. I mean, played his part in a treble. Um, I mean, if, if, you'd, if you'd have cut it after one season at City, you would have said flop potentially um, because he didn't play that much. And when he did, he wasn't really affecting games. Whereas season two, um, he, you know, he, he did his season of learning. He, he learned what Pep needed from him and, and, and I think Pep learned also how to get the best out of Grealish, not just Grealish learning Pep's system. I think he realised, oh, you know, I've got a player who I can I can use in a certain way. I think the arrival of Haaland helped him as well because Haaland just takes attention away from other players, which means it opens up little bits of space where someone like Grealish can operate. So Haaland coming in really helped as well. And um, yeah, I mean, he, he, was, he ended up being a really key player for them. Um, last season so um yeah I'd, I'd say you know there's it's tbd to an extent because we'll see what he does in the long term but short term i think after last season it's a success yeah same and and that's also why the tbds you know anything can happen like mm. with jack Grealish, i think of uh, as lee said after the first year it wasn't looking good but now you see he actually is a critical part of that city machine. Yeah, I say good. I think the, the, the only issue with Jack is, I think he might have paid up the 100 mil already because of how essential he was or crucial. They, they won the treble. It's like, you can't get hmm. better than that. And I think yeah. he parties so much that <laughs> he probably is going to, probably by the time he gets 30, he's going to play like, he, he's not going to be as good as like other players <laughs> that, that 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 are good after thirty. So I think I think thank God he won the treble because yeah, it's good right now. You think he'll but, be like Rooney, like, whereas like at yes. one point you know him yeah. and Ronaldo were playing together, and then Ronaldo's yeah. still playing, and Rooney's Rooney's managing now, kind of thing. Yes, yeah, exactly. But the <laughs> only thing with Greedish is he's got to he's got to keep himself fit and stay in Europe because I don't think like imagine mm. Grealish in Saudi Arabia that's a jail term waiting to happen like, he, <laughs> he would drink he would sneak in so much tequila <laughs> and he'd be he'd be gone he'd yeah, need some bodyguards where it's like you can drink at home but we're not going to let you out yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah plus he needs to just stay in shape period because he's a model for like Gucci and all that stuff so Oh, his yeah. modeling career might actually save his soccer career. Like, <laughs> yeah. Unless they airbrush him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. As to the rest of these on this list are pretty interesting, but we gotta continue. But Lukaku was next. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and Lukaku's next like twice. Which one? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, then uh, Bale. I and think both slots, right? Oh, Pogba definitely flop. All three flops. Well, is Lukaku, Lukaku went to Inter, right? For no, the, this is the oh, one to Chelsea. Right. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. And it's how much did you get him for the first time? Not <laughs> not a hundred mil. No, first time he was a youth guy, youth product from Angelic, right. I think ten million or something. But no, like when we got him, he was a hundred million, and. Uh, that's things stand right now. We have no takers for him. And he tanked pretty much practically. You know, that was around the time when things went bad. Like he caused a lot of disharmony. And um, like even off the field, uh, you know, the least you expect from players, you know, when they're not doing well, mm -hmm. is to help the team off the field. And he didn't even do that. So, um, yeah, I think he's probably, arguably, the Probably the biggest flop among all of these names that we came up with. Yeah, 
Inter to Chelsea was like a definitive flop in a shortest amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 2021. Yeah, 115 million. He, and he blew it off the pitch, not even on the pitch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he joined in late August and then December 20th, I think, was the that interview. So, yeah, that, that was a Chelsea career there. And then there's Dembele. But let's, let's, I'll just go to 13th. We'll skip Pogba. We'll skip Dembele. Just Jude Bellingham. Yeah, he looks Dogs. nice. TBD good. TBD. TBD excellent. Yeah. <laughs> TBD, but things are looking good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, then, uh, you know, just because we were Premier League people, Harry Kane, Tobian. 100 million euros plus 116 million in add ons. He might have just earned the add ons this weekend. And is yeah. like, what an assist to Sane in against uh, I forgot the team they were playing, but that's like it, that assist was like vintage Harry Kane touch. And then yeah. he kind of got lucky on the goal, but he was in position and he took that shot. I think he would have went in anyway, but uh, yeah, I'm happy it's for his him. goal. Yeah, it's his goal. And then we go, it's, it's interesting. This this list is interesting. Maybe we'll come back to it another time because I'm sure Chelsea next week will buy somebody else for 100 million or that'll make this <laughs> risk, this list relevant again. So, yeah. 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 I, I know why you, Ian wants to cut it just before Anthony. <laughs> Anthony? Listen, we, we can talk about Anthony because we can talk about United now. And that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a good call. Let me see. <laughs> let me see if Anthony's on there. Well, they say 95 mil, million euros plus five. But so that, like, I don't think the way he's playing now, he'll make that plus five. So he'll, yeah. he'll be, unfortunately, he'll be a... Below under, the 100. Yeah. Uh, below the 100. Well, I mean, if you read some stories, Anthony might be your next Greenwood. So we'll yeah. see how that develops. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? What's going on? Oh, you didn't yeah. know about that? No. Oh, so his, um, is it his wife or his girlfriend? I'm not sure. Ex, I mean, yeah. yeah they, I think it's his. I think it's his wife has filed divorce proceedings, and there's a. Yeah, the, it's not looking good. Like, because it's the cases have been filed both in UK and Brazil. Mm. Uh, what? Yeah, and there, there is. I mean, I don't know how much we can speak about it here, but like, there's an element of violence leading to a pregnancy termination, stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah, it says uh, preparing to fight. His, his ex-wife has said she's preparing it's... to file a police report. So, I mean, yeah, it's all hearsay right now. But then I guess we'll see what happens if it does. Yeah, go down that route. And <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm speechless right now. I didn't, had no idea when did that come out. Uh, I think it was like last week, maybe. Let's have a look at the date on this. 19th, oh no, a couple of days ago, this story I'm reading, 19th of August. Yeah, I missed it completely. Yeah, I know they, and nobody, nobody like on the United, like things that I listened to even brought it up. Yeah, I think yeah. United needs to invest in a entire squad of people whose only job is to deal with you know, like the, you know, like how the scouts, scouts are, uh, <laughs> like do some off the pitch recruitment yeah. and, and vet some of these guys. I mean, after the called Greenwood thing, they need to employ some PR people as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, what do we <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, right, let's see. I don't know much about the Anthony thing, so you know, I can't say much. I gotta look it up after. But yeah, that's you know, feel bad for you know the victim involved. And this is just all terrible. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh and then we're gonna talk about the United versus Spurs game. Uh, I feel like, based on last week, 
that we came out the way I wanted us to start the game. Because besides Casimir being a lone pivot, I feel like there's just been no energy in the team whatsoever. And we have a system that thrives when we press. And our press last week was non-existent. And so to start out the way we started out at Spurs with a decent press that created some chances for us was the way we should have started, but it was not consistent. We definitely didn't take that press into the second half. Everybody was just like, Rashford didn't look like he wanted to play the nine. And he didn't get into any challenges with anybody when the ball was up in the air or passed long to him. It was just, there was just nothing there as far as like him wanting it. Anthony on the right made terrible decisions. Like him and Juan Bissaka refused to go down the right flank of the field, the exact side of the field that they're playing on. They both rather cut in and then they have no ideas when they get in there. And Anthony, a lot of time, made the wrong decision, gave the ball away. And on the left, it probably would be better to just play Rashford over there. But we're playing Garnacho. He's still young, so he's still not making the best decisions. Sometimes he's – I don't want to say there's any – sometimes I feel like on the right, they're not direct enough. And on the left, they're too direct. So it's just a matter of, like, composure and patience just along the front period. And when there's no goals, I think it disheartens the rest of the team. And – they just don't see anything happening. So then it kind of takes away confidence from everybody. And even if we did get that penalty, which was a penalty, and I think it was in the first half, and I, and I know why we didn't get it, because they're wrecking the game before, now, and two wrongs don't make a right. A penalty mm -hmm. is a penalty. So taking one away from us this week because of what happened last week, you're not even the same crew from last week. So so what are you doing? Like the crew this week should get the same punishment as the crew last week for the opposite reason. And it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I, I felt like even if we did get that penalty, we would have lost that game. Like I just felt that we didn't have the belief and we weren't motivated enough physically and mentality wise to beat the Spurs team. And kudos to Spurs. They, you know, and their new coach, they look good. They look like they're like adjusting to their system. And I think everybody in our team is still learning our system. And uh, it's going to take a minute to learn it. So I'm not going to panic yet. If it, when it works, it will work. But man, we got a, a lot of work to do. And, uh, it's not happening right now. But the least the player should do is play with more gusto and more effort and press. At least do that. Just do that. And I think there'll be a big difference. But we've been sluggish with our first team since the preseason. All preseason, like when we play the first half of games with the first team, and then the second team will come in, like, you know, the under-21 guys, like Hannibal and those dudes. And Hannibal, even as a 10 in place, of, of uh, Bruno would cause turnovers and create opportunities. And, uh, uh, you know, so that, that mixture of guys that were more hungry, more desperate to prove themselves, would just play with more effort and harder. And that's what the first team lacked in the preseason, and they brought it into the season with that. So I think that's a part of the major issue, issue like effort. I don't know why we're so sluggish. We need not to be like what Arsenal today and most of last season. They, when Arsenal starts the game, you think it's a smash and grab at Nordstrom's. Like they run in there, fill their bags <laughs> up, and run out of wherever they go and leave with something. Uh, and that's their mentality. You know, so we need to approach games like that. Yeah. And the, the Anthony thing threw me because I had no idea. It was like, how much trouble can one club be in? Yeah. <laughs> Bananas. I think it's I think people just need to like in terms of the performance and stuff and the result people just need to 
be calm for the moment. Same with Chelsea fans as well. Like it's because I thought Chelsea looked for a lot of the game against Liverpool last week looked really good. Um, I mean, for United, it's weird. Like you got the result this week that your performance deserved last week against mm-hmm. Wolves. <laughs> Whereas like, if you had lost against Wolves but beat Spurs, I don't think anyone had any arguments. Because um, I thought you were the better right. team for quite a few long periods. Obviously, you know, Fernandez missed that header. Uh, personally, I thought it was a penalty. Um, the handball, because you know the arm is is sort of like up like that, rather than it being by the side. It's it's there, yeah. Um, so I think it's a penalty, and 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 yeah, like you know, you got a win last week when you didn't deserve it. You got a loss this week when you didn't deserve it. So Wolves missed so many chances against you guys last week, and they should have had a penalty. So I think but I think you know, Wolves deserved. Football. Oh yeah, exactly. But that's what I mean. Like people. Um, you know, like, oh, United aren't going to do anything this season or Chelsea aren't going to do anything this season. It's like, well, we're we're two games in and you've had one good performance, one bad performance. It's a long season. We'll see what happens. Um, if it carries on, you know, with those results and you have three or four of those results in a row, then it might be a, a bit of a concern. But, you know, if either team goes and wins really convincingly next week, fans will be, you know, oh, we're you know, we're a great team now. It's like people get too high with the highs and too low with the lows. It's like, nah, especially this early in the season, like just try and stay level because it's, uh, it's a long season. And, uh, um, you know, if, if it's, if it's looking shit after 35 games, then okay, be sad, <laughs> be angry. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's just tough because of the way we ended the season. Mm. And then just the way we're playing now, it's like it's like you saw the possibilities. So you're like, all right, the natural progression would be like to start the season on fire. But mm. we we look bad in both games. Like the game against Wolves was the worst win I think Manchester United ever had that I've ever <laughs> witnessed. Like the worst win. And we all yeah. know we got away with one. We just all know it. And we're lucky to have three points this period. But <laughs> it, it's it's football and shit can change. And it always changes. You know, there's teams that started out the season on top of the table and ended up getting uh, excommunicated and relegated. So it's just, yeah. Yes. Yeah, got to have some chill. Also, like worth remembering, you know, you signed a striker who technically feels like he hasn't really signed for you yet because he's not fit um, mm-hmm. with Hoyland. So, like, you're going to reap the benefits of that hopefully in a few weeks once he's, you know, up to speed and ready. Um, so that's like a signing you've made that, yeah, you haven't really made yet because he's not not available yet. But I mean, that will come as well. Yeah, but nobody is even expecting him to like score 10 goals you know that like none of the fan base like if he gets 10 goals we'll be happy with that but but he's so young like nobody's like it's a seriously if you're a football fan is demanding anything of him and that's a good thing and a bad thing a good thing for him but a bad thing for us right now as a team that needs goals so I think you know, even when he 10 goals should expect right I'm just throwing that number out. Yeah. In all, comp- in all competitions, I, I I would expect that once he's... I don't think it would take him that long to get up to speed. And he's he's a talented player as well. Um, I think he'll really offer you something in that nine role. And it means Rashford can go back out to being a nuisance coming in off the, uh, off the left wing. I personally think we should play... I personally think just because of Anthony's bad decision-making on the field, but now what you mentioned off the field, <laughs> I, I feel like, yeah. listen, we bought, we bought this kid from Dortmund to play him on the right. He's ended up on the left consistently. Play Sancho on the right. Mm-hmm. And then use Pelestri as a backup and then Anthony needs to straighten this thing out, you know. But we'll we'll, we'll see. What Ten Ten Hag bought him? He's put like we. It, it, there are some cracks 
in this whole Ten Hag thing. You know what I mean? Like, even like buying a player and then a the medical doesn't write and we still buy the player. It's it's like, that's kind of like, that's kind of not a, a right thing. And I'm not saying nobody's perfect, but that's kind of, to spend that amount of money for a guy that's injured is bananas. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, somebody's supposed to send you a player for that amount of money, like, 110% fit. You know what I mean? Like, Brighton, I mean, uh, Atalanta are definitely the Brighton of the goddamn Italian league. <laughs> to get away with that. A word on Spurs, though. I think I thought they looked really good. Uh, I mean, yeah. not initially, because United got off the block so, so quick. Like shot after shot after shot, and uh, yes, Burks took a while to get into the game. But uh, yeah, Postecoglou, like his his style of play looks really attractive. It's whether they can like you know in Harry Kane's absence actually keep turning on these turning out these performances and converting them into three points. But yeah, they got their goals, and um, yeah, I mean they they're gonna have the kind of season that United. Uh, from an expectation point of view, the kind of game uh, season that United had last season, where people are going to give a little bit of a free pass to Angie, and uh, yeah, but it looks like the football looks good though. Can't lie. Yeah, mm. yeah and then... also just like, Go ahead. as I was say, like certain players as well. Like you look at like Bissouma, um, yeah. looks like a new player, and I think that's uh, an in, you know a bit of a damning indictment on Conte that he couldn't get yeah. those sort of performances out of Basuma because he was there the whole time. Um, and, you know, that's a player who's looking like a new signing for Spurs because he was just so underused and undercoached last season. Uh, whereas, you know, Postacoglu's embraced him and Basuma seems to have bought into his style of football as well. And he's looking great. Um, you know, you've got a player that came back on loan as well. Uh, Destiny Udoji, he looks decent as well. Like, I thought he had a good game. Um, yeah, I mean, if, you know, Spurs, they've got, I don't know how much of the money for Kane they're allowed to spend, <laughs> that Levy will allow them to spend, because I feel like they already sort of pre-spent some of it on the likes of Madison. Um, so we'll see if they can, if they strengthen any more. But I mean, yeah, it'd be interesting to see where they come in at the end of the season, If because I, mean, I like the style of play. Like we said, um, yeah, there's players there who weren't performing before that are, so yeah, it's um, it's a big hole to fill that Kane's left, but they can sign players. Who knows? Richardson might start scoring. Um, <laughs> ah, no. We'll find out. <laughs> One thing I'm liking yeah. is the beef between him and Mikel Antonio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's going on with that? Uh, Antonio mentioned uh, in an interview something that he, he sort of mentioned saying about Richardson scoring one goal. And Richarlison's not happy about it. Um, <laughs> and and Antonio said he was he's been talking to Pakatar at West Ham because they're both Brazil teammates, uh-huh. and saying like, oh, you know, let him know it's not serious or anything. And apparently Pakatar came back to Antonio and went, no, bro, he hates you. He's not going to shake your hand when we play. Um, <laughs> like he, he's not going to let it go. <laughs> so I think Mikel Antonio and Callum Wilson have a, have a podcast. Yeah, and it's kind of rare that. Two active professional footballers at this level have a regular podcast with the top boys. So, like this, is their podcast. They're not mm-hmm. guests on a podcast, so they keep talking shit. And uh, this this Richardson angle came up once, and Richardson had something to say. He basically says, something like, "You know how many how many World Cup goals do you guys? How many? Yeah, <laughs> fucking lose. <laughs> like have you ever been considered for a World Cup?" <laughs> so. And then you know they 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 took a shot at him. Uh, uh, he said it and... first. No, the the guy started it first. They basically said because okay. he kept. Yeah. You remember there was a time when Richardson, I think, had two or three goal celebrations, and then those goals had ruled offside. He like uh, took his shirt off and stuff. So these guys uh, like, man, how chicken. many how many how many times are you gonna keep take keeping your shirt off? And it's always offside. So. But, yeah. <laughs> 
I'm actually interested to hear what uh, Antonio has to say this week on Casero, because considering he scored that goal. Yeah, I, yeah, like uh, that. That that's let me tell Antonio. He's a tough customer. Like, yeah, like first of all, he kind of embarrassed Leroy Col- Leroy Colwell. Is it Colwell? Like yeah, he yeah, he yeah. he wrote off both your defenders, but Leroy Colwell, his approach to make El Antonio on that pass was like pure amateur. It's like I, I'm I'm yeah. sure he'll never do something like that again. But it's like like what are you doing, bro? Like just stay on him. I don't know what he was trying to do. Like I don't know if he's been watching movies or some shit like that. But you just don't approach a grown yeah. man like that. Like who's built like that? Who has that speed and close control? Like Michael Antonio will surprise you. Like he's improved so much in the area of goal scoring that you he was that you still believe he's the guy that can't do that. Mm-hmm. And you, and mm-hmm. and you might approach him that way. Yeah. But he, and he was like, no, I can. Like I know I wasn't always like this for most of my career, but I have become this. So you better come at me yeah. the way you'd come at like somebody who did this all their life and and that was this weekend was an example of that like the way mm. he took he took on two defenders bro like two coveted like defenders i know one was old because was that tiago back there who, who was back there is tiago and colwell but uh and- this Disassi is the one who made the mistake right by misjudging the ball yeah 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 but colwell Caught up to him and then bumped him and rolled. All of those left one on one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Antonio, wow. Antonio hit that shot like he meant it as well. Mm-hmm. He 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 wasn't messing around with that. Yeah. So Diaz, I mean, Diaz was a Colwell. He like he did what he could do. Diaz was a guy that like bumped off him, but yeah. But that, yeah, Antonio, man, props for that goal, man. That was not that he had a lot of work to do, and he did it. Mm-hmm. Uh. So what's going on with Southampton? Let's get to some Southampton and then maybe to some green. <laughs> uh, we, wa- we won. Um, we were the early game on uh, on Saturday, so it put us top of the league briefly. Is, now, um, is that because there's no electricity down there in the championship? Is it do you have to play <laughs> in the daylight? Like, what was what, 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 so, like, the game at like 12? Like, what's, what's the deal? <laughs> Do all your stadiums no, just... look like Luton's? Like, what's going on? <laughs> uh, yeah, the players had to go through someone's house to get there. Uh, no, we we, we played uh, we played Plymouth, um, who've just come up from from League One, but they were unbeaten before we played them. Uh, they had their first two games; they won one, drew one. Um, they were looking good, and they gave us a hell of a game as well. Like, it could have gone, it could have gone any way. Uh, we went. Um, one nil up at the start of the second half. They equalized instantly for one one. And then they were getting a little bit tired towards the end of the game. We were pushing, uh, pushing, trying to get a winner. Uh, we were missing all sorts of chances. And then all of a sudden they hit the post. Um, and then right towards the end of the game, we had a set piece come in, corner came in. Um, Adam Armstrong headed it back across goal, and then Shea Adams was there for the tap in. Um he started this week as well, rather than coming off the bench. So, um, yeah, he got that. Adam Armstrong got two assists this game. Uh, Teller scored the first goal. He looked great as well. Um, yeah, I mean, um, we, we played with like a patched up midfield because um, obviously Ward Prowse and Lavia both left in the same week. Um, Smallbone, who came back on loan last year, he was out on loan at Stoke. He came back. He's been one of our starters and he was injured. Alcaraz, who's been one of our starters, was injured. So we put Adam Armstrong into midfield this game. Um, and uh, along with Shea Charles, the 19-year-old that we signed from Man City, he got man of the match. He came in. This was his first oh, ever... It was it was his first ever senior start in football. He came off, on, he came off the bench in some of the other games. Um, but before that, he was playing for City's under-21s. Like This was his first ever start in senior football, um, playing CDM. And he racked up some impressive numbers in terms of pass completion, interceptions, tackles, um, that sort of stuff. So he looks a real take, talent. Take only that 19. Ward Prowse and Lavia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and 
just today we confirmed uh, we've got Flynn Downs on loan from West Ham, who I think is a really exciting player. Um, he's not going to quite get the minutes at West Ham, so they've loaned him to us. And uh, he played under our manager, Russell Martin, at Swansea a couple of seasons ago. Um, so he already knows what the manager wants from him uh, and how to play that way. So that's another good addition for us. So the next game we've got, we'll be, we'll be looking even stronger. I think we've got QPR at home this weekend. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, with regards to the other teams quickly in the league, Leicester won again this weekend. So they're top, they're joint top at the moment with Ipswich because uh, Ipswich won again as well. So they're the only two teams that have 100% records. And the the winning goal for Leicester was scored by um, by Niels Boy um, Cassidy, the uh, uh, the Italian uh, young midfielder who's uh, on loan from Chelsea at Leicester. He scored in the ninety second minute. Um, yeah. Leicester beat Cardiff two one. And also shout out to Aaron Ramsey. He's back at Cardiff, which was like his boyhood yeah. club, and he scored a rocket from like thirty yards um, in that game as well. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of the table, anyway. yeah, Cardiff yeah, Cardiff lost. Cardiff lost. Uh, yeah, they lost two one. I saw that goal, and that was a great celebration. So to lose mm. after that, that's bananas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not not best look for him. But I mean, we're yeah, we're we're up there right now. Leicester and Ipswich are both on nine points. We got seven. Uh, Birmingham won again. Tom Brady, Birmingham. Uh, oh, Steph. they're on set. Tom Brady, Birmingham. Yep, yeah, they're on seven points as well. So. Um, there's four of us on seven points. So there's Ipswich and Leicester are top on nine. And then there's Norwich, Birmingham, us and Preston all on seven points. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's all to play for. I'm just pleased that we've been unbeaten in a period where we're still trying to sign players and we've been having players leave. Like we haven't let that upset our rhythm too much. Um, because, yeah, I mean, it's a league where you need to be getting points on the board from the start. Um, so yeah, we got we got QPR this week. Uh, I can't remember who we have the week after. I think it might be Sunderland, and then there's a break for internationals, uh, and then the first game backs Leicester, and I got a ticket to that one. So uh, I'm going to be uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm going to be watching that one with interest because um, that could be a big game. I'll go down there and bad luck your team, man. They're doing good. <laughs> well, there's a there's a slim chance I might go against QPR this weekend, but I've got some other stuff going on, so I don't know if I'll be able to make it. But yeah, after the international break, we've got Leicester followed by Ipswich, who are the two unbeaten teams currently, and I'm going to be at both those games. So um, yeah, it's yeah, going to be interesting. <laughs> what were you going to say, Neil? No, I was saying Ipswich look good. Like, they're, uh, and they're unbeaten too, like three wins out of yeah. three. Yeah, promoted team. Uh, but yeah, they have got Kieran McKenna in charge, the ex-Man United coach, yeah. ex-Tottenham uh, youth coach. He's a yeah, he's a he's a, he's a smart manager. He's uh, doing a job there. Mm. Oh, cool! And where is uh, where is the team that uh, our team leads? They're down at the bottom. Leeds haven't won a game yet in three. They've drawn two, lost one, and the two games they drew, they were were losing in both those games. So um, yeah, it's it's uh, at times at times are rough for them. <laughs> I think I was thinking about Middlesbrough. Where, where's the team that uh, was it? Carrick. Uh, oh Michael yeah, Carrick. Carrick is that... Carrick's team have have played three, draw one, lost two so far. Um, okay. But I mean, like I say, it's it's it's, Sorry, it's like I was saying with the, the Premier League teams, it's it's a long season. Don't yeah, get it's too like 97 high. games left out. Yeah, right? so. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I mean, if you can get points on the board, it is good too. But Middlesbrough also lost um, their top scorer from last season, Chuba Akpom. He's signed for Ajax. Oh, um, so yeah, interesting to see a British player go out there because uh, they just sold their only British player, Ajax, Calvin Bassey to Fulham. Um, so yeah, it's... Uh, it's yeah, tough times for Leeds, tough times for Middlesbrough, but they could they got enough time to turn it around. But I'd rather have the points yeah. right now. <laughs> and speaking of Fulham, like Mitrovic left. Like I thought he was gonna end up staying and then like after winning and playing in that game mm-hmm. uh, last weekend, the weekend before, like midweek, boom, gone to the Middle East. So yeah. Uh did you guys read this statement? that Muratar wrote 
was it John Murtaugh or who was it? The, the other. Oh no, it's Arnold. It was Arnold. David is it David Arnold or Arnold? Yeah. What? yeah. Is it yeah, it might David be Dave Arnold. Arnold. Yeah, yeah. Dave Arnold, yeah. Arnold, Arnold's it, surname for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's just confusing because there was a comic named David Arnold. So I get the names mixed up. So I don't know, man. The, the, the way the statement is constructed about releasing Greenwood, like I understand the releasing part because of all the baggage and United doesn't need that right now. But I guess everybody was like trying to get more clarity on the actual case itself. And now mm -hmm. the way his statement was constructed, it was constructed to protect him. And also like because of like all the leaked information that came out last week. So the, the, the statement protects him, but then it might not just be protecting David Arnold. It, it also might just be, the truth, you know? So it seems like it's his belief from all the investigating that they did that there's two sides to the story, which we've only heard one side because of the video on YouTube. And uh, so, but we just don't know. It's none of our business. It's none of our business. And then if, how do, we, how do I put this? Like, like, I understand if there's information that you have about the victim, you can't put it out. You know, he, Mason Greenwood is, I think, married to her now, or is going to be, and that's the mother of his child. And so you have to protect her because she is the victim. Like, I do believe he actually did something, but I just don't know if it's, the amount of what's on the tape, you know, he's admitted to, to, to doing wrong. I just wish them both just luck in their future endeavors for their sake and for their child's sake. People are young and, you know, they do stupid shit. They make mistakes. So this is uh, unfortunately a way for them to like learn about themselves and become better people and grow to having better lives and I, I wish Mason Greenwood and his baby mother like a life of love and success and that's all I can really say it's like as a football fan I am sad to see him go I, I believe in forgiveness and redemption and it, not that it would have been tough at first but that would have been better to completely redeem yourself at the place that you messed up the most to like to have been the, the club and the team to like give somebody a chance and like see it work out for all of them for all the parties would have been like a great story but nevertheless it still can go that way so that's what i hope yeah i think i, I think it but... kind of boils down to like what he actually did right because united i think they came out of the statement where it's it's a little wishy-washy they're like they're alluding to the fact that he didn't do but then they're also saying that you know he's uh, sorry for the mistakes he made so which one is it because if the, the police case says that the charges have been dropped like he's not he's not been cleared of any charges it's just that you know there were no witnesses and that you know, that's a very tricky uh road to go down so and I mean, I, I when that initial statement came out from United, I was hoping that because they kept stressing on the point that we're going to be transparent, we're going to be clear, we're going to be uh, absolutely uh, open to what we found. But then the statement came out today, and there was no transparency. Did they say that? Like, yeah, yeah. They they stressed transparency a whole bunch of times in that initial statement that came out last week. Uh, but what happened? Uh, apparently, what's happening is that. They were kind of caught unawares. They were trying to, the, the plan was to reinstate Greenwood, but mm. the athletic got wind of it and they were about to come out with their story and they asked the club for comment. And that's when they came up with this. So the club was like, okay, we, we are just going to, you know, say something right now. 
And then obviously when they released that initial statement, the backlash was was immense, right? And I think eventually the, the right decision has been made, right? Like, uh, because it just would have been untenable for him to play football at this level to, with the spotlight, with, you know, y- even you see the heat on his, on his team. He was just going to, he was just never going to go away, like, short of actually, because unlike a lot of other cases, there's actual stuff that people have seen in this case. So, short of actually giving a conclusive case as to the fact that he did not do these things, I think the heat he would have received on these wouldn't have gone away from a significant number of um, you know, fans, pundits, whatever, right? And then you're just creating an atmosphere that's not helpful for Manchester United to do, um, uh, you know, to go forward. So I'm, yeah. I'm sure like they had to consider those things. Yeah, and I think 100%. it kind of, it kind of smacks of them though. Like, cause we, I mean, everyone here mm-hmm. is being critical of United for the way they sort of tried to tease and leak the information a few days ago by saying like, by sort of insinuating that he would be brought back in mm-hmm. and then they received all the backlash from it. And then they kind of did a U-turn. It's like, well, you could have spoken to people and you could have gauged public yeah. opinion and focus group that shit in private if you wanted to, if, if, if public opinion was going to be the ultimate deciding factor in your decision. Um, like you could have found that out without making yourself seem sort of tone deaf and without, you know, conviction um, themselves. And, and like Neil pointed out as well, like they, the, the statement from the club and from Arnold kind of say that it was they they use the phrase cleared of charges rather than charges dropped, which is yeah, it's it's again misleading. Um, but I mean, I think it was always going to be the best decision for it to to be a part of the ways, and I can understand why that's hard for United to do because, like they've pointed out, he was at the club since he was seven years old. You know, yeah. it's it's someone that they've. Um, sort of had in their care essentially for that amount of time if they started at that age. Um, so I can I can understand why it's been a tough decision, why it's been a long deliberated decision. But ultimately, like Neil said, like there's no real way he can be reintegrated into that team and play in the Premier League in front of fans who are going to be giving him relentless abuse every game. Um, I think it would be a big, you know, test of his mentality to to try and put up with that and um, yeah I mean I, I don't know where he goes now does he go to Saudi Arabia does he take the money and and go to a country where you know fans aren't potentially gonna um pipe so up about fans that fans want to bring it up everywhere like I don't mm. see where you could go with, with fans like in a, in a, in a in, where people like if they can't find any ammo on you if you're a different race they just mention your race like look at Calvin Lewin left the field with a big ass bruise on his face mm. for Everton. And I just before we popped onto the podcast, I was listening to a disappointing statement that his father wrote about like all the derogatory insults and comments that he got because mm. he, it's like like fans are just out of pocket pockets sometimes, yeah. just period. So it's like my thing is like where could he go anywhere where this is just gonna be not spoken about on the raps. It's like is there's nowhere so i think saudi not? arabia it's sort of, sort of country where Maybe. if people are told not to mention it they won't mention it <laughs> um <laughs> it's it's you know it's oh, a sort of country what, where that's what you need if, if, if you know in saudi arabia i think the, the people are quite easily controlled oh, there man. um it's 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 that you know i think it's that sort of environment um but yeah i think there's very few places where you can go where there wouldn't be people that object to it um but you know that's that's where we are with it and you know, there's, 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 there's consequences to certain actions, and there's certain actions we know about. Certain things, obviously, we don't know about, but there are certain things that are out there, and you know, that's that's gonna follow him wherever he goes. And I mean, I mean, one thing that you said, sorry, one thing you said, and then they they was also saying is like, like how it looks for Man United, and I was like, I, I don't care how it looks for Man United that they like put leak some stuff out 
to get a gauge. I feel like they did it the wrong way because it showed that they really cared about this player that they got at seven years old. Like it, mm-hmm. the, the mishandling of it, the uncomfortableness of it showed me that like somebody cares about somebody that needs to be cared about in order for this person to be them to become the best person they're going to be. And also, if he's still going to be involved with this woman, he needs to become the best person he could be so he could be the best person that she needs. You know what I mean? So it's like people like the way this was handled. This is not an easy situation to be handled. And situations that are not easy to handle do come out messed up. So everybody's like looking at that. And it's like, that, that's, that doesn't even matter to, to the people that really concerns. It's like, yeah, I, I, I'm just glad that they cared enough and their care because they said they would continue to like support him and help him, which is going to support and help her. So that's all you, that should be important. And, and like people always like pick at shit, you know, like, uh, and I know they're doing that in England right now. Like, what, what is like the way it was handled? United didn't do this to her. You know what I mean? They just caught with this player, but you know, hopefully their care would help him grow and help her and the kid you know what i mean yeah and i i think that's like even on a human level right from from greenwood's point of view the fa- his family's point of view mm-hmm. i think this is a more easy situation to be in like uh because you know as you're saying like it would have been brutal to face up to uh the limelight uh you know it's it's tough enough being a Premier League footballer with the pressures that are on you, and yeah, sure. I mean, clearly the lady in question, and she's an adult, so it's not like you know there might be a case of you know making the best of a bad situation. But for whatever, like you know, we can't think for her, right? Like in her judgment, she has forgiven him, and I think that's, that's where that's like true. when we when we're talking about forgiveness, right? Like I think that's that's what he that's it in itself is a big thing that he has gotten like because if he hadn't if she hadn't he would have been in jail and he wouldn't have been able to make any living out of football so the fact that in a way that he has been forgiven already like he doesn't need to play for Manchester United he doesn't need to be in the Premier League for the, for that to happen he's already um, got his freedom his liberty he's already been uh getting paid from football uh, from his united contract and you know i'm sure there's a payout involved in this parting of face and uh, uh and you know he will find as leo saying like he will find some place to go play football it it just will be have, it will have to be unfortunately in this case a more palatable place <laughs> for so, the situation he finds himself in so saudi arabia it is all right yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it might, you know, this is it's it's dark humor, but it might even be uh, a, 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 a next to his green uh, green box. Yeah, green it might box. be a, it, it might be a tick on his name. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying not to say it explicitly, but you know, it's it's not it's not a country that's known for having uh, the a, a good record on domestic violence, so oh, it might okay. even be something that you, you know is attractive for for people there. Yeah, I can't I can't pick up what country you're talking about right now, but <laughs> yeah. put that in the chat. No, the Saudi Saudi Arabia itself. Saudi Arabia. Not, not oh, afraid okay. to say that. <laughs> no, no, I said I said I said Saudi Arabia, but you didn't. Yeah, yeah. You know, I said Saudi Arabia in the green yeah, yeah. would would leave. That, that there it is. Uh, we got this, this big games this weekend coming up. Let me just uh, go back to that. Yeah, Chelsea, you know, Liverpool. hopefully you can score a goal. Because I'm not really, I'm really not confident about winning a game. Because it doesn't really matter. Like, I feel like our good games turn into draws. Our average games turn into losses, and then our bad games turn into absolute disasters, and because we we just can't score, right? Like at the end of the day, when you have a shot at scoring a goal, 
it doesn't really matter what the opposition is because we are we are missing clear cut chances. So, yeah, let, let's wait and see. I mean, that that was real. I agree with all of that, <laughs> and because uh, yeah, that's that is basically you guys' pattern. So, yeah. all right. Neil has made me realize that Luton Town versus Chelsea at Chelsea is one of the big games this weekend just because <laughs> of Chelsea's pattern. Uh, United, not United, I want to say Liverpool is going to Newcastle. So that's a big ass game. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, is that the highlight of the weekend? I'd say so. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. So I think Bright, yeah. Brighton West Ham will be interesting as well. Yeah, I think Brighton would just take them apart. But even though West Ham beat Chelsea with 10 men, 3-1, I just think. But Newcastle-Liverpool, I can't even call it. But this is a good chance for Liverpool to show, to to prove to us that what happened, how they the results last year are going to be the results of this year. Meaning, like, even the game this weekend, like... Liverpool went down one nothing to Bournemouth. And last season, we'd have been like, all right, if you're watching the game, Liverpool is going to score, equalize, and then they're going to run away with this game. But you couldn't be sure of that this weekend because of how they played last weekend. But Liverpool scored the three goals and beat Bournemouth after a tie with Chelsea. And now we're like, how are they going to do against Newcastle? Like, is this new midfield that Newcastle, that Liverpool has, is it real? Are they going to be real? And maybe even if they lose, it's too early to tell. But I'll tell you one thing, they look good as hell. Slava Sly, whose name I'm probably butchering, looks good. Uh, McAllister looks good. And Gakpo, you know, they pulled him back from the forward line and he's in the midfield and they look good. And I, just watching this midfield, I'm worried about it because it could be really good. And they still have good players on the bench. Like they brought in Elliot. I don't know if Bacetic is, is injured or he's healthy. They still have Jones. I think he's, yeah, I think Bacetic is injured. Uh, I mean, they're going to be out with, without McAllister for a game or two after, after this last one. Oh, yeah. That's, so do you guys think that was a, that was a red? Nah, no, right? Not even a yellow, yeah. really. The speed the other player was running at made it look worse because they had so much momentum going into it. But he just lifted his leg up. He wasn't like a malicious or like violent tackle. It was, yeah, it looked worse than it was. And I think the red was the red was harsh. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that should have been that bad. Uh, so yeah, so Newcastle they won. They lost this week to a Man City. They went to Man City. They lost one nothing, but you know you're losing one nothing to the treble winners at the treble winners' home. It's a pretty decent score, mm -hmm. and uh, you know Newcastle is very formidable. When are they going to get this guy? That is it. Chelsea just sold him, or or Southampton? You just is that your guy, Neil? We both sold players to him. <laughs> but the, the the blonde dude? Who? Hall. That's when Lewis Hall, yeah. Lewis Hall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When are they getting him? I'm really Well, I don't that. think it's done, though. So, yeah, might be done by the weekend. I'm really mad about that move. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah, that's this old. Yeah, I'm surprised <laughs> more teams haven't leapt up at him. Because you, you look at it, right? Like, he's 18. He's not even like 19 or 20, like some of these other, uh, you know, teenage guys, uh, like these youth mm -hmm. guys that are coming up. I feel at 18, he's earlier in his progress than where Colville and Reese were. That's, uh, he's probably one of the most technical players I've seen at Chelsea in the last couple of years. So, I, uh, I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really like that dude, man. I really like that dude. Uh, I, I, we forgot the Women's World Cup yes. <laughs> final. Sorry, sorry. Should have talked about. The I was, out. I was waiting to bring it up. I watched it. Oh, good. I watched the whole thing. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, I, I was at the club 
at uh like I, by the time I got on stage like twelve something, the game was at three. So I just went to the gym. <laughs> mm, yeah. And then came home and watched the game three a.m. in the morning. So uh, oh, cool. go ahead. How, how you feel? Uh, I think Spain deserved the win. Um, England have had a really good tournament, uh, but they like, we we just weren't up to the level uh, on the night. I think I think England could potentially have won the game um, on a different day, but I think they were they were the better team. Spain they played better football. Um, they dominated. They probably had more big chances um, overall. So I don't, I don't think England were completely outclassed, but I think Spain were the better team, um, which is, it's a shame because um, there's a, a lot of talent in that England team. They've, like I said, they played a good tournament. They didn't play terribly in this game, but they weren't quite at the levels they've shown in some of the other games. Um, it might've been, you know, a game too far for them, but um, there were some little moments towards the end though. I thought the Spanish player should have got a red card um, towards the end of the game. The ref kind of bottled, Given the the yellow card, um, the second yellow, a Spanish player um, towards the end, um, it was a second yellow card offence for sure. Um, mm. it, it would have only been a few minutes on the clock right. left, but um, who knows? It could have made a difference. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a good tournament. It's England's highest ever um, World Cup finish um, in the women's game. Previously, it was mm. was 2015 when we won the third place playoff. So to make it all the way to the final and, and you know get that second place is it's it's progress. So there needs to be uh, you know some perspective there in terms of people not being too disappointed. It's sad to lose a final, um, but I mean the viewing figures it was getting on TV here were fantastic. It was you know um, so many people watching it, or the, the the pubs and things were full. I saw like pictures and you know stuff uh, where people were watching it. And that was great to see as well. Um, and you know, props to the Spanish players. They, they've they've got so many of the Barcelona players who Barcelona. are the best team. They're and the best the team in the world in, too. in yeah. women's football right now. Barcelona. They haven't had like nine players or something in that squad. Um, and yeah, I mean, they've they've been going through some turmoil on their team as well. A lot of the, there's some very very good Spanish players who didn't even play at this tournament because they wouldn't play for the manager because um, oh, yeah. he's been Why? accused of he's been accused oh, of all snap. sorts of. Controlling oh, behavior, um, where like he was like forcing players to keep their doors unlocked at the hotel so that he could come in and stuff, and all sorts of like just unacceptable stuff that you wouldn't do to anyone, let alone you know, players in the women's game. Um, and the players didn't celebrate with him at the end, really. Um, and there's a video of him like grabbing a player on the bench as well. Mm-hmm. Um, during the game and it just looks weird but yeah he's he's not liked at all by the players but the federation back him and they you know the players said well either we you know he goes or we go and a bunch of players refused to play because the the federation backed the manager um, but then the head of the federation um, forced a kiss on a player on the lips during the ceremony so, so what as I'm well. hearing is what I'm hearing it's is Greenwood up. could play in Spain <laughs> right now, Jesus, yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not um, all the way to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, it's not a good look, though, for the, the Spanish Federation at all because um, they've sort of kind of proven the point of the players who, who stayed away. And um, from what I hear as well, the players don't like the coaches' sessions and everything. It, that It very much sounds like they won in spite of him, not because of him. Um, like the players are just doing what they do at Barca. <laughs> That team must be really good to like hate their coach and still that's yeah. that's amazing to hate your coach oh, yeah. and still win like a, a whole tournament yeah. is I've never heard no shit like that before in my life. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, it didn't sound like the most comfortable of uh, of environments uh, and yeah, but I mean, like I say, they they were the best team. Um, they got some fantastic players. They f- they fully deserve to to win that final. This is some hindsight shit, but if. England had started the players that they substituted in the second half. It, it, they it it they could have finished full time one one. Like in the first half, we gave away the ball so much because it wasn't about being technical. 
it was about trying to be direct. And uh, we just gave up possession so easy. But once they put on like Reese James's sister, mm -hmm. you know, Neil, Reese James' sister, bro. That, it's, 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 you don't see a touch. The her touches, it, it's up there. That's all I can say. I, it's her touches and the composure. It's next level. It's just different, bro. Like, like that. Even just thinking about like the situation she got the ball in, and just how she handled that, and it, and and because I saw the first half, and you can see the comparison to the second half. You're like, this is exactly what the first half needed. It was her. And there was another girl that went on the right for England that kind of opened up the field in the second half. Chloe Forgot Kelly. Her in Chloe Kelly. She didn't play yeah, in the first half, right? Yeah, they made double substitution. It was Chloe Kelly and Lauren James both came on um, right. and just made us more attacking, gave us a bit more threat. Um, but I can understand why we didn't go all out attack against Spain because we could have lost the game by half time equally as well if we'd have gone too attacking and we just we could have just got opened up so it's a balancing act tactically of of you know how how much you try and stop them and how much you try and show your own strengths and against Spain who are the best team in the world the manager went for slightly more pragmatism and uh and then tried to go more attacking second half so it's yeah I, I just don't think we were irresponsible defensively when they were in so yeah I'm definitely going on high right and I'm sticking stubbornly to my hindsight because what you said makes perfect sense. <laughs> but I just, we didn't look irresponsible with the, those two in the game, you know? And yeah. I, we definitely needed to hold on to the ball more in the first half because the, the goal came directly from a turnover. Mm. Yeah, and there was a player out of position. Uh, Lucy Bronze was out of position and it kind of mm -hmm. opened up down the right. But credit to Spain, it was a great finish for the goal. Um, yeah. And... That player who scored the goal, Camacho, has been on a real uh, roller coaster of emotions as well because he got told just after the final that her dad had died as well. Um, so, like same day, that's that's a crazy set of emotions to deal with after the game in one day. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> It, yeah, like you score the winner in a World Cup final and then you find out your dad's dead. That's like, that's... Nah, you're that's making like, this up, bro. No, nah, no, nah, it's all true. That is yeah. crazy. Yeah, highest high to the lowest low. That's... Uh, yeah. did, did they know before the game? And just yeah, tell they her didn't, they, they, yeah, they didn't tell her. That must have been like her mother or like siblings or parents' decision. Yeah, because they traveled. They they all traveled to the game. The dad too. No, no. The the rest of the family. The rest of the family. Yeah. Was he sick or something? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know the full um, the full details. Yeah, this podcast yeah, episode is bananas, bro. Camona, sorry, not Camacho. Olga Camona. Um. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, tough one. But no, like I say, overall, no complaints for the result because I thought Spain were the better team. Yeah, they were. They were. were. Yeah. Anything you want to close on, Neil? Any last thoughts? Anything? I don't know if his mic is on. <laughs> Because I saw him try to talk before and nothing came up. You're, you, now you, can now, you hear me now? now? You, yeah, now I can hear you. There we go. Oh, okay. I had to just mute and unmute myself. Anyway, so <laughs> no, I think, uh, so I didn't catch a lot of the World Cup. This is you know, just the timings are so weird here. I just saw the one game, uh, the Nigeria England game. Uh, mm -hmm. But I was, you know, I was catching up the highlights every day in the morning. And it was, I, and this, this has been a trend, right? Because you, you end up watching a lot of the club football too now, the on the women's the 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 physicality and the technicality in this in in the women's game has really you know you it's very entertaining now and uh, you know it's not dogmatic football and this you know at this top level there are very few teams that are 
uh, you know, the old stereotype of the women's game, oh, it's easy to score a goal because you can just walk the ball in. That doesn't happen. Like, And even the English uh, coach, she, like, tactically, she's so sound that uh, I was hearing something that she's been offered a job in the in the men's game now. But, you know, I mean, the way she's going, like, she should probably just stick to this team and, uh, you know, try and go and get, get, get a trophy next time. She won the Euros um, last year with this team. So oh, she's, yeah. uh, she's already got a big one in the bag. So it depends whether or not she wants to hold on um, Serena Weigman and, and manage mm-hmm. at the next World Cup because that's a whole nother cycle away. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, with, with the Euros in between again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of good young players in the team as well, though. So I think it's going to be a really strong team for years to come. And also the support on the ground, like if you and you see those games and and the the Australian public, they really got behind the behind, behind of course their team, but general teams mm. all over is really well attended. And uh, yeah, they're here for the big time now. Mm. Uh, yeah, I always enjoy the the Women's World Cup for the most part. So yeah, yeah and and then. In- Normally, I'd watch more games, but for some reason, that was the only game I saw. Yeah, because the games were at 3 a.m. for us. (laughs) Yeah, they were on Australian time. Australian time is tough, even here. Yeah, Yeah. like... I mean, mean, I watched World Cup games at that time, but I can't, like, do that in December and then do it for the Women's World Cup a few months later. You you know what I mean? Like, like I'm more invested in in, in male football, you know, so... And I, I usually watch most of the Women's World Cup. I didn't see none of it, but this game was worth. Like, cause I didn't get no sleep after that game. I think <laughs> I slept maybe an hour, and then started watching the Premier League game. That was first that morning, which might have been. I forgot who that was, but yeah, <laughs> it was a yeah. But yeah, good tournament, I guess, and uh, yeah. congratulations. Spain, you beat England. I wanted England to win, but uh, we didn't get it. I think Neil froze. Any last <laughs> words, Lee? No, just uh, yeah. Long may Southampton's unbeaten league run continue. Um, oh, yeah. More more Premier League action this weekend. Um, just yeah, just loving the season being back underway. I mean, I wish I could say the same thing. Maybe I'll change my tune <laughs> after United play good and win. This week, and we need to because the game after is against Arsenal. At Arsenal, so man, we need these three. We need this three <laughs> for sure, hundred percent. But uh, yeah, Neil is frozen. I don't know if he's going to leave and come back. Maybe he's going to come back, and then we could take the photo and then bounce. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. And any, what's the word on the uh, the the league? Oh, the fantasy league. Oh, yeah, we are doing terrible. Um, <laughs> those of us that are in it, um, out of thirty-three teams, uh, Martin is twenty-sixth, Neil is twenty-seventh, I'm twenty-eighth. We're all in a row: twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight out of thirty-three. Um, and uh, uh, Jose uh, Stable is top with Milwaukee Beers. Um, he's on one, three, four. Ahmed Zekri with Needmo Salad is on one three three, Hello. and then Eduardo Tamayo and Aaron Firkin are then on one three two. Their joint third. So um, yeah, I mean it's again it's early early doors. Um, I made some mistakes, which include picking too many Chelsea players because um, they've not been starting. I thought Mudrick was going to have a good season. He's been on the bench every game. I've I've transferred him out now. Uh, I had Darwin for Liverpool because, again, I thought he was going to have a strong season, but he was on the bench. He came on for, like, a few minutes at the weekend. So, yeah, I've had to make some changes early on because uh, I've had some players who've done good. Though. I've had Matoma in from the start. Matoma's been great. Um, He's got an amazing goal this weekend. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've made some good choices, but not enough good choices. Yeah. I can't even <laughs> get in. I, I tried again on Friday. Yeah. To- join the league and it just didn't work. I just tried it on the computer as a matter of fact, which is a iPad. I don't know why that code is not working. Uh, yeah. Or maybe I'm trying it too close to like uh, before the kickoff of the 
It might be because there's been Friday. there's been there's been Friday night games both times the last couple of weeks. So right. yeah, midweek midweek might be the time. <laughs> yeah, I should try it now. But because yeah, I'll, 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 I mean, all I'm going to do is come last again. But I'll join. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week. Uh, hope your team does good. Unless it's playing one of ours. And uh, be good to each other out there. And, uh, you know, like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll, I'll hit y'all back on YouTube or just wherever you listen on iTunes or uh, where else are we? We are on iTunes, Omni Studio, and I think there's somewhere else, but I can't remember right now. My bad. All right, y'all. One. Two, three.